And I get a valet. You know, I always, I always thought that was French, because it just, I mean, no one says valet. They got valet parking. No, you say valet. Hey, can I get a valet? Not a fish filet, a valet. What's going on everybody? How's everybody doing? Today we're gonna be doing a review. I don't necessarily think that I bought this just for the review. I bought it because I had to see what the price point was about. Okay, before we really jump into this, you guys have to understand this dripper was $400. Like, I understand that most people would not believe that. It was about 330 or 320 euros, roughly speaking, give or take. We'll say with everything out the door like four beans, probably the most expensive RDA that I've ever bought. Now, that's not saying that there haven't been the m that go for 1500 bucks, or there's plenty of drippers out there that I can't think of, then there's probably none maybe one or two that actually hold its value and then multiplies. So finding this was a little bit challenging. I was looking for something else and then I came across this and immediately I said, okay, I gotta get this. I, I don't care what is on the inside. I don't care what it looks like. This is something I have to do a review on. First off, the name of this dripper is called the Napoleon. And it is out of France, so I guess that's coincidentally enough. It's titanium, I believe it's 23 millimeters. The way that this deck is designed, you can either do single, vertical, or horizontal builds. You can also do dual. It's not just slimming it down just to a single coil. The post configuration isn't that outdated. They have done another dripper previously, and it had kind of the same deck that this does. The only differences between the two is the whole top cap assembly has changed, and this is all titanium. I don't think there's any stainless steel on it whatsoever. Apparently there's about two people that work for this company, so I could see why this price point would be so high, just because there's no other person to really help out and speed things along. Something also worth mentioning is these are no longer in stock on their website, so I don't know if they're gonna make another batch, but I think they only made 50 or 100 of them. I wanna say 50, and it was very, very limited production. I have never seen a review on this. I've never even heard any anybody talking about it. So this is 100% legitimately either a unicorn or a narwhal. I, it might not be a narwhal though because I don't feel, well that's a unicorn in the ocean. That's an ocean unicorn. Not really because you could find them everywhere but they have this treacherous horn on the end of their head for whatever reason, like jousting or fencing of some sort. Raid 5 Titanium RDA. Let's not waste any time. Let me bring this down and show you what truly $400 will get you in the realm of drippers. Let's flip it. The exclusive limited edition, this is number 42. Now keep in mind that this is 24 millimeters in diameter and 31 millimeters in height. Guys, this box alone does have the dripper in it and it feels like a, just a regular box and that's because of it being titanium. When you open it up, you can get this little card right here which basically is their business card. Inside the profile pouch, you're going to get this little jammy right here which is essentially a squonk section that you'll need if you want to upgrade this to a squonk. However, I'm going to use it as a dripper, so I'm not really going to need this. Then you get another profile bag. This is Napoleon on the front of it, and it has a bunch of extra O-rings in it. Well, now, no matter what I do with this, this is just going to get fingerprints all over it. So I just want to show you real quick before we get into this and before it starts to get all messed up and jostled from my fingers, how well this looks. Now, any of the things you see on there already are from me taking this apart because I really had to take a look at this once I got it in the mail. Those scratches, however, on the bottom side of that are not from me because this has not been screwed onto anything whatsoever. Volute Mods Napoleon number 42. Really wish the finish of that base section right there would have been in better condition than what it is. Drip tip on the top is going to be very, very proprietary. And what I mean by that is there's nothing else that's going to work on this. Essentially, the way that you take this off is you don't pull it because there's threading on this top cap section. To take that off, you're just going to unscrew it. And usually with proprietary drip tips, kind of like degrade and take away a point off the final rating because this 
you're you're telling me I can only use this drip tip. Now the machining on this, these facets, these cutouts are very, very nice. And surprisingly enough, they're not sharp. They're not gonna catch your fingers. You probably will feel it if you've got some big juicy jammies, but the way that it is by default, it's machined very, very, very well done. And titanium is a very hit and miss. It's like soft, but it's hard. When you're looking at the airflow, you have one line here and then two lines here. As you would adjust this, there's these little dots and lines that show you how much airflow you have. The lower you go with this, the less airflow you're going to have. You see there, that's almost all cut off. You can tell already that there is some juice in there, which is what they're using for lubrication, but it doesn't seem like it's serving much of a purpose because, well, there we go. Okay, yeah. See the juice everywhere? Why we see this in brand new devices always makes me wonder what the fuck is going on. Why do companies ship their shit like this? I understand they're trying to make it easier for the consumer, but the problem you have is one, it looks disgusting, right? Like I get it, you have to clean it, whatever. Why not ship it where there's no O-rings in it? Like wh why is that not a thing? Stop putting O-rings in it and then putting juice on it. What happens if someone's allergic to whatever that is that's on there? Christ. If you want to do this fully wide open, you're going to want to put it on this setting right here. That's going to open the bottom section here and the top section up there. There is no way to fully open all this up. Now, the airflow on both of these sections are in very, very different locations. This is more low set. This is more high set. And if you want to start using just single sided, you're just going to start using this section over here. Now, if you go all the way to the large there, that's going to shut off the airflow on one side, but then open it all the way up on the other. These little air flows that are on the top of the cap, like this is definitely innovative without a doubt. Um, it's just very, very dirty. It looks like it gave it some, some permanent markings there. You see all that? The machining is really well done, but they put this fucking juice all over it. The inside looks good aside from it just being wet. And you see the airflow on the top up there and then on the top section here. Yeah, that's just got to be clean. This is this is just ew. It's not that big of a deal if you got a couple little fluffer nutters everywhere, but this is just this looks like it was dipped in fucking monkey oil. Before we get into this, I just want to show you the precision in this machining. Now, this is the squonk assembly. I'm going to show you how to put this in, but this is very, very unique. Instead of just swapping out the pin on the bottom, what you do is this is essentially the pin on the bottom. Nothing screws into that, and you don't actually screw this in to the base. Get ready for intricacy because it's about to go down. The condition that this was in is absolutely treacherous. For instance, Bree has been now cleaning it for about four minutes trying to get whatever residual shit that was put on there, the VG, off because it's just disgusting. Now the deck doesn't have that, but what the deck does have is it looks some 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 dirty down there or something. We'll be able to figure that out in a second. I'm not 100% sure how they expect you to do verticals in this, just because of the way that the post configuration is. For instance, you have this little slit on the inside here, which each side of these is where you're gonna put your legs. It is a little bit tight, but I did do a fuse clappings 28, 38, that'll fit between there on both sides and screw down. But I've never seen a screw assembly the way that this works. Wait till I show you, because it's gonna blow your mind. Regular screws, so basically you're gonna put one leg around here, wrap it around, you could tighten it with your fingers, and then obviously super tighten it with a flat-headed screwdriver. I don't know if you see what I see, but you see this ring that is located around this whole dripper. Look at the very tip of that screw right there. I have no idea the type of zooming I'm gonna be able to get on that, but there is their logo laser etched inside of the top of that screw right there. If you lose any of these screws, you're screwed. Tell me you've ever seen a screw that does this. This is gonna blow your friggin' mind because I have no idea how this works. Watch this. So the screw is in, right? Look at on the inside there. You can see my finger through there. When I screw this in reverse configuration, watch inside of there. Let me put something behind it so you can see that I'm not doing any kind of trickery. Those two slits, right? Thread this in reverse. Look at this. Look at the thing. Let me, let me do that again. 
look at those walls that are on the side of the screw. And again, do you see how this little platform section comes down? Here's the crazy part. When you take the screw out and you look at this, you don't even see that. You can't make this shit up, man. Then take this off. Look at this thing. What? I would sit here and play with this, but I'm too scared. Like, you see this section right here? This actually comes. Look at There's like threading on that little piece that has these little ledges that in fact go on the side of this. Okay, sounds good. So, you wanna make this into a squonk. Grab the two of these. Again, this may be a little tight. Don't be nervous. Grab it and turn it. Check this out. That is your little assembly that you will swap out. You see, it's exactly the same thing. The only difference is the implementation of the squonk ports. I'm not gonna need a squonk just because this is kind of like an RDTA or an RDA with a very vast well. They're literally the same exact thing. The only difference is on the bottom, this is studded on the bottom here, it is flat. But if you were so inclined, this just goes in just like that, how it would on the other one. There's a little dirties in there. That, that could be cleaned, that's gross. Okay, so this is not Peak or Doan, it's like Ketron. I don't know what that is. Some type of extra shit. But look at even the machining of this little apparatus. Oh my God. So the grounding, once you screw this in, that's your grounding. Listen, when you start doing intricate things and you're making things very, very advanced, the way it works in the vape realm, for whatever reason, people get upset about that. All like, oh, it's so complicated, it's over-engineered. It, I, I have nothing to say to that. I'm not, I don't agree with that. To take a couple minutes out to figure out how to take something apart. Now, if you can't, then there's reviews out there, videos like what I'm doing. There's nothing like that for this. This is all just kind of free balling it. But here's the little insulator, which I do believe to be peak that kind of goes in there just like that. Then you take your little adapter. This is the non-squonk rendition just because I don't really need that. That's gonna go in there just like that. And then this goes into the base. Now be careful. See, that may happen. Don't be nervous. Put that just like that, go in like that, and then it threads in. That is how the deck is secured in. Guys, this is fragile stuff. This is not go in here and uh, manhandle it. I had a saying for this a few years back. I used to say lady fingers. You know, d d hold it and use it like you would be as if you were a lady. Uh, no offense to all you manly women out there. And then all we're going to do to tighten this down is just tighten it just like that, and that's it. That's all you need, 28 dual core, 38 on the outside, eight wraps, here we go. See here, what I did was this side here is lower than this one. And I did that because to compensate for the way that they have their airflow set up. So it needs to go just like that. Once again, that is the Napoleon by Volute Mods. Let's bring it 
on the top. What do you do? What do you say? What is going on, everybody? Back on top with the Napoleon RDA on the top of the Haze Mod. Okay, a little bit of information for you. If you guys ever buy something, right, and you got a very awkward taste, like machine oil, and no matter how many times you clean it, you get that taste. What your problem is, is not so much machine oil as it is saturated into the rubber O-rings. I had a dripper that I could not, no, it wasn't a dripper, it was an exo set for a billet box, and I cleaned this fucking thing. I even went as far as pacifating, that's pacifying, what is it called? Passivate. Passivate? Passivate, right? It's not decapitating because it didn't have a head for me to remove. So I went as far as passivating. Basically what that does is, in lack of better terms, just kind of cleans out the stainless steels uh, pores, so to speak. But there's a way to do it with crystal light. You boil the crystal light, you put in crystal light, then you use rubbing alcohol. Anyway, I did that. And no matter what I did, I could not get this juice out. I'm like, what the fuck, man? I was using propane torches. Lo and behold, I took the O-ring off, right? Like before I passive it, obviously it was off, but I put it back on. And I never thought to truly clean out the O-ring, like to scrub it. And no matter how much you try to scrub an O-ring, it's still gonna retain the flavor. So that was the problem. Once I swapped that, I was like, oh wow, this is great. That's the exact same problem I had with this, is I cleaned it, I was like, all right, it's good to go, fine, vape it, no, no, that's not right. Now, it's better. It's not totally gone, because it's probably in the very, very bottom O-ring, the black one that I didn't swap out. But you could tell, when you see these, you're gonna see how wet they are. I don't know how well you're gonna see, but you'll see that they are shiny, see that? That's that machine oil. I'm sure if I sat there with like a dish detergent and an alcohol, but the problem is you don't want to do anything where it's gonna break down the rubber. Let's get back into it. So, $400 dripper. Let's see if when I vape on it, it feels like that. Surprisingly enough, there is a lot of airflow. It's good flavor too. Very, very smooth hit. Here's the issue. Now when I'm ready to drip on it, I'm screwed. Because what I have to do is, one, get this inside of the drip tip, which isn't a problem, really, but it kind of is. It's a 510, well, sort of, size of a 510. But I have to put this in here like this and then just kind of fill it up. The good thing, though, is that this is an RDTA type deal. So you have a huge reservoir on the bottom. So what you could do is if you don't want to drip on it, kind of fill up the well underneath. You know what? You can't do it the way I just did it because what happened, I don't know how well you're gonna see this, but take a look at the inside there. See how wet that is? That's because of the way that the insert is that is proprietary for the drip tip. It's got these holes, so it stops spitback from happening. That also stops you from doing what I just did. But I managed to get it through it. I guess if you squeeze hard enough, it'll just go through those ports. But it's really not designed to go through the top. This is legitimately designed for squonking only. But you can use it for dripping. And anybody that thinks that there's only drippers that are designed for squonking, that would mean, well, let me give you a reference. On the Monarch RDA, I got a lot of shit. Everybody's like, oh, it's got a squonk pin in it. It's designed for squonking only. Then why the fuck do I see a coil when I look through the drip tip? Why? If you don't see a coil like this or like the Jenna, how it's got the track down. Now, you can use both of those, including this, and drip down the, well, I... I guess it depends on which diverter you're using. I want to say that this is only designed for squonking because of the way that the drip tip is configured on the top, but I think that would be too much. I think you can use this as a dripper. You just have to fill up the reservoir. And it does give you the option of a squonk if you don't like the option of filling up the tank. I feel like this thing is designed to give me a lot more power. Like for instance, the way that I'm vaping it now, right? It's good, everything is good. It tastes good, feels good. It's nice. It's a very, very cool vape. And I'm rocking Fuse Clapton's in this, so thank goodness that I didn't go with regular round because I would need a whole lot more power. I'm gonna put this up to about 64.5. Here we go. The big question, 
is whether or not this is worth $400. That's a very, very big question. If the drip tip wasn't proprietary and I could use my own 510 or 810, would help out the rating vastly on this. The machining, the precision, the ingenuity that's involved in this, the intricacy, there's a lot going on with this. The uniqueness, the innovation, the, the machining, the finish, everything on this with the exception of how dirty it was and how dirty the O-rings are, are perfect. But there's no extra shit. Like all you get is extra O-rings. If you lose a screw on this, that is gonna be the quickest $400 that you're ever gonna throw away. So you have to be careful how you clean this, where you clean this. Don't clean this over a sink unless you got some type of mesh over the drain hole to stop stuff from going down it. What's a really good thing to get if you have something that you're very, very nervous or just in general if you're trying to clean stuff. We do a lot of steaming here, so we have this little thing. Basically what it is is a little, I don't know what you want to call that, a capsule that you would put stuff in and it's all surrounded by mesh. So, and don't vape on that. Don't try to cut the shit out and try to add it as a coil. That's not what the, nope. I'm sure you could do that because it's stainless steel. Don't. <laughs> Just don't. But you would put something like this and you wouldn't have to worry about it. Or you could even have like one of these little jammies. What'd you call this? A tea infuser? Yes, sir. So this is a little tea infuser jammy. And you can put this like in a cleaner and then you don't have to worry about it. So as far as this being worth where it's at, first off, that's going to rely very heavily on your bank account. If you have lots of stuff inside of your bank account, then I'm sure it's not going to be a problem. But if you're on someone on the pinch and you're typically used to buying Chinese drippers, I would not recommend you to buy this. Because you, first off, you're not going to get the kind of vape off of that that you will this. This is a very smooth, fluent, no turbulence whatsoever requiring more power which is very awkward for me like i have a 0.4 in there and i would typically use 40 watts with that here we are at 70 watts on a porn porn four it's four people in one porn it's a lot of power for a 0.4 I don't think it's a ripoff, but the fact that it's all titanium, that's fantastic and all. I'm glad that I bought it just to have something that's so unique and so special to the people that made it. I really like things that are like this. Super rare, I don't give a shit about the price. I mean, it is what it is. I'm gonna buy it anyway, so I might as well do a review and let people know about this. Now I get it, people are gonna ask the question is why do a review on this if nobody could buy it? Well, just to let people know what is out there, what's on the market. Because you never know. You might find one on a cheap or on a flip and you're like, oh, I saw that review. I want that. At least now you have something to give you a good reference for the way to take it apart, how it works, where it looks, where it's from. I almost don't want to give this a rating because it literally falls in its own block. I don't have any other drippers that are $400 except for M Addies. But even when they came out, they weren't $400. It's just what they're worth at now. I guess I'll give it a rating. It literally falls in its own block though, literally. So if I was to rate this dripper on a zero to 10, just because of the intricacy alone of the whole post configuration, how it's convertible, comes out all the different parts. A 6 to a 6.5. If it came with extra accessories, like extra screws, probably a 7. If you were able to use a 510 or 810 drip tip on this, now we're going into the 7.5 8 block. There really wouldn't be more to change at that point. What would have been really friggin' cool is if the barrel where those dual set of air flows is, right here, is if you do want to rock a single, you have some type of insulator that would go on the other side to stop pulling air from that, and you would get all that airflow from one coil. Granted, you'd be suffering from the one-sided challenge where you get all the air from one side of your head versus the other side of your head. It's definitely a unique dripper, and I don't regret buying this. I wouldn't buy another one just because I'll never use this. This is gonna sit on the shelf on a very expensive mod and it'll never be used ever again. But, four beans for a dripper. Woo! Hot! I can't give recommendations for this just because of where it's at as far as the price point is concerned. And I've kept it real. 
Have you? Jesus.